So um, the things that we're going to hopefully go over today, um, we'll, we'll have, we'll work with some UAV data that we have. And that is included in your sample data folder you can see here. That includes uh, an object file, which is exported from IGSoft. It's a mesh. Um, this object file comes with the material file and, s and two uh, audio photos, which, which basically are related to the textures that will be draped on the object. Um, we'll discuss more in detail about that. We also have a few um, analyses, and these analyses are all done in GRASS GIS. Um, so among them, you can see uh, the installation time and irradiance, which are the solar analysis. And then we have a relief, and uh, we have um, a simple R that's seen water output. Um, so we will basically work with, with our um, with our mesh data, the object data, and uh, we'll refine it. We'll work with it to make it decimated, to make it a bit lighter, um, to get rid of some of those errors, and uh, and then we'll start draping some of these uh, maps onto it. Uh, finally, if we have time, we'll also import a DSM into into Blender. We will georeference the scene using uh, Blender GIS add-on, and we'll import it um, to see how um, how how these two surfaces compare to each other. So. Do we have anyone who hasn't uh, opened or unpacked the uh, sample data folder here? You have, okay. So if you all have the sample data folder, let's go ahead and then um, open Blender. And then in Blender, just uh, use file open and hover to your directory, uh, sample data directory, and open centennialuav.land. You can see it's a light file. There's, um, there's nothing in it, but I've um, made some default adjustments to make this experience easier for you. Now, do we need to delete the cube, or when we open it, the cube goes away? Um, the cube will be always there. Um, if it's deleted, that means that I have deleted it. Okay. So by default, all the time, um, the cube will be there. But um, there may be some way that you can change all those defaults in Blender, and I guess there's a way. You can also design your own file and tell Blender that every time that it opens, it opens that file. Okay. So if everyone has this file, um, I'll quickly go over to see what we have in the scene. Um, here in the outliner, you can see we have a lamp. Um, I the lights. Sure. Sure. Want to clear on the screen. Go, go ahead. I'll leave that out. Oh, this is the lights. Okay. And we have care object, which is this flight route. Um, it's hidden for now. Um, hopefully, the next session we'll go over um, to see how we can actually animate our cameras towards this this one. Um, if you don't see it here, because it's on material modes, and that object is just a simple um, thing, so if it's not deleted. Oh yeah, it should be here. When you zoom back, you can see it. Um, we will hide this for for now for this session. But I just wanted to you to know what's happening in this file. Uh, in the first, step, we'll import the uh, the optic file. So, uh, go to File, Import, Wavefront Object, and in your sample data folder, you'll see the Centennial OBJ 
um, dot obj um, so there is a panel on your left side which uh, which gives you information about uh, the imported object so here you can see that you have um, some options um, for the coordinates in the bottom and th those are the most important things you need to know about um, when they say uh, forward and up that basically means that how you're seeing um, access and georeferencing or let's say um, coordinate system set up um, normally we use z up and we say y forward so if your yours is not in this mode um, make sure it's y, it's y forward and z up that means that your z direction goes up, the positive z is up, and then um, the forward is, is y, and then your x is like the other horizontal axis. Um, so if you change these, your, your object would be imported, kind of rotated, and you need to rotate it manually in the, in the scene, so that's not a big deal. Um, the other thing that you need to make sure that you have this image se search button active. So the good thing about OBJ objects that make them very common and everyone uses it, uses them is that um, they come with um, a package of material file and also textures. So they're not only they're not only geometry. So here you can see we have in the folder we have um, .mtl .obj and then we have two textures. The way it works, um, the material objects have like detailed information how these textures are geometrically uh, draped onto this object geometry. Mm -hmm. So how, how this kind of wrapping works. And you can see here you have a very complex um, order photo, which, mm -hmm. which normally is very distorted. I don't know, it's like a collage. Mm -hmm. But all the information, how it is a small pieces would be wrapped around all those cubes and buildings and everything is stored in that MTL file. So these, these files, when they go together, you would be able to um, basically import the mesh with the material. Um, so if you have all these objects, uh, you, these options selected, click import object and, and be patient. It really takes time. So I'm getting a little black box for my cursor. Is that normal? Yes. Okay. Actually, I get it. Now it's spin waiting. Okay. Because the first time I tried to import it, I thought I had locked up under. Oh, okay. No, it takes time. Um, even this computer is a VR already uh, laptop, and it takes time because basically the point cloud is very dense. The point cloud that comes from Microsoft is very dense. Um, there are ways that you can decimate the point cloud from Microsoft, uh, but we intentionally um, kept it a bit high so we can see how we can decimate it in Blender. Because sometimes you just receive the UAV data, you don't have Microsoft, you don't have any photogrammetry software, um, but you have a 100 megabyte Blender in your flash stick. Um, so that's how object would appear in the scene once you have it. Um, so this is the mesh, um, and now I'm, I'm on wireframe mode. Um, I can change to material mode, and it shows how this thing is wrapped up. So this is what we have um, in the scene. So in the next step, we want to just decimate it because it's very heavy. Um, so Blender gives you kind of live information about your scene complexity and your memory usage. And th they're all on the top header here, you can see. It shows your um, Blender version, number of vertices, number of faces, uh, number of triangles, and number of objects. And at the end, you can see um, the memory usage of each of these objects. So at this point, you have an object here which has um, one million, around one million four hundred thousand faces. Could you remind me how to pan? Sure. Um, one, once you have this eye, this mm -hmm. the mouse scroll, you can hold shift. Oh, hold shift. Okay. Yeah. And then you'll pan it. Around. So when I right click, am I moving the object? If you're right clicking, yes. And if you if you're right clicking, yeah. Is that bad? Will that mess up my... Yes. Okay. I need to undo several times because I'm moving the object.
So you don't have this set up, so it clicks. You see what I mean? So this basically doesn't work for you when you it press. It does not work for them. But I can yeah. play around with it and try. Can you can you really shift? Yeah, because you cannot also orbit around it by holding this, mm -hmm. which you should be otherwise. Okay. 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 Cool. So um, make sure that the object is selected. You can select object by um, right, -link, right clicking on it on the viewport. It gets yellow. Um, you can also use left clicking or outliner here. So that's how you select the object. So once you have the object selected, um, so remember this is our properties panel here and then the properties editor, sorry, and then we ha here we have some tabs um, and then material was one of them but now we need the modifier which is this um, kind of uh, ratchet icon um, so let's do add modifier and then here you should see decimate and the generate So um, here you can see that the number of faces um, is indicated in the panel, modifier panel. It shows the same number. And here you have this ratio, which what we're tackling today. So um, make sure that you're not, this is like a slider, but because you have a very, very heavy um, um, mesh here, we don't want to drag it. So we just click on this and just change the numbers because that would in real time change the, the submission. So um, you can click and then type 0.5. That means that you want to basically um, decimate this guy into half. And briefly, is it just taking every other point and throwing it out? Um, What's the algorithm? How's the algorithm use 0.5? That's a very good question. I don't know. <laughs> okay. So you're wondering the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, when you go to your to the wireframe, you can see uh, it's a bit more spaced out. Um, in the tutorial, I've put two. It should have. It should be somewhere explained in the in the yes, manual. In maybe manual. A, a, having a reference there. Yes. And that's something that maybe you can then put into lecture. Sure. Like what kind of method, mathematical method, whether it's based on the shape mm -hmm. or whether it's really just a, uh, based on the every other point or something like that. So I have um, accidentally lost my menu for the view. How do I get it back? Click on this guy. This is all the bus guy. No, this is kind of thing. Yeah, no, this is all the bus. Okay. Yep. All right. And then here you can see that your number of vertices and faces is basically um, shrunk to half. Now you're dealing with a much lighter object. And apparently when you go back to material mode, you didn't lose a lot. So you can continue doing this until you have a satisfactory result in terms of your, um, your file size, your memory usage but also the quality of the object. You don't want to lose that much of those details. Um, I'm wondering, are there any options for destinations? 
So you, you have a threshold, but can you like select different methods for this emission? Oh, well, I, I can see here there are two or three methods on collapse on subdivide the plan planner. Okay. Which I don't know which. Okay, so they they already tells you a little so bit. So it's a unsubdivised sphere space reduction, um, dissolved geometry to form plan or polygons, and then collapse. So basically, edge collapsing is is, is I I gather it's like um, it's like a connecting two meshes. Yes, yes, together. Yes. So, two so that two would edges be more together. like every other point or yes. something like that. And planner would be that. When you have multiple points mm -hmm. and they are in one plane, you uh -huh. can replace it. So that one almost may be like a based on the shape. Shape, okay. But you will have to check to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> check it. Any idea why I don't see the texture? I just have like a white surface. Uh, do you have cycles in there? And you ha do you, are you on material mode? Yes. Can you right click and you see, can you see all these node structure? If you right click. No, I can't see that. So it means that you don't have the materials there. So now when you think about it, when you think about the decimation, uh -huh. if you have buildings, what would you use? Would you use collapse or planar decimation? <laughs> <laughs> so why do we want, what, what happens if we use collapse base uh, compared to, to planet? Collapse would be, let's say, imagine every